afternoon, evening. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Richard. Um, welcome to uh, this uh, Q&A session on the catalog of open infrastructure services hosted by Invest in Open Infrastructure. I'm um, Emmy Tang, the engagement lead at IOI, and I'm gonna be getting everyone started today um, on the call. And then uh, Richard Dunks, our director of research and strategy will be taking over the uh, bulk of the um, presentation, the introduction, as well as um, addressing your questions about COIS. Um, and we also have today, Caitlin Thaney, our executive director here with us today, um, who will um, be also answering questions and, and facilitating that process as well. So uh, that's the team here with you today. Um, welcome once again, and we really, really excited and happy that you're all here. Richard, if you could advance the next slide, please. Just a little bit of welcome and logistics at the beginning. Um, we have a shared notes doc. Thanks, Caitlin, um, for putting the link in the chat right now. Um, please do sign in in that section with bullet points and moving cursors down the half way through the first page, I believe. Um, we'd love to know who's here. Um, this is a question and answer uh, session, so we hope you have lots of questions. Um, when you have them, please feel free to put them either in the Zoom chat or in the um, shared note docs as well. There's a section called questions and suggestions um, right down the middle of page two of the doc at the moment. Um, and I'd also say that if you do you know, have, an, have a question that you see someone else has already written in either the chat or the doc, please feel free to upvote it by adding a plus one after the question and we'll um, you know, prioritize answering those. Um, and uh, this session is recorded. Uh, we're trying to you know, make it easy for folks who, are, uh, who may not be able to make it live today. So um, just to make um, that clear, um, we'll be sharing this recording and uh, this shared note stock as well on our blog soon after this call. Um, next slide, please, Richard. And some grounds rules, grounds rules and expectations before we get started. Um, this call is designed as a place for learning and conversation. So we ask that um, you seek to understand and not to be understood. Um, be curious um, about you know, each other's perspective and comments and, and raise questions. We wanna know that you are thinking and um, that you share that thinking with us. Try to be helpful. We wanna focus on um, solutions uh, to the problems that we have identified together. And last but not least, please be respectful. We wanna build the community and not tear it down. With that, I will hand over to Richard for the introduction. Great, thank you so much. Uh, so my name is Richard Dung. So I'm the Director of Research and Strategy here at IOI. I'm really excited to be talking with you all today about the Catalog of Open Infrastructure Services. Um, and for those of you who haven't been watching with bated breath, every blog post and tweet that we've put out, I want to give you an overview of COIS, just give you a sense of, of the reason that we pursued this work. Um, and it really primarily was to address information asymmetries. We heard a lot from people in the space um, where it's like, I don't know what services are out there. I don't know what's available. Um, I have this need, but I don't know how to meet it. And then there's the due diligence question about um, the services, the, the providers who are providing these services and understanding a little bit about like, well, how are they funded? How are they led? How are they governed? Um, and, and other kinds of details about the, the services that aren't necessarily readily available to everyone. So we wanted to address this uh, with a, a catalog, basically, of, of these services, if you would um, access in order to foster great understanding of the, the breadth of open infrastructure services. We see a lot of uh, services coming on and almost seems like all the time we're hearing about a new service that's available, a new attempt to provide a, an open alternative uh, to some, some tool that's out there to help further the scientific and scholarly endeavors. So we want to have a way to, to disseminate that understanding to as many people as possible. And also cultivate a deeper awareness of how services are provided. Uh, a lot of this information came from digging deep into the About tab, which I don't know how many people spend a lot of time on, really understanding the services and, and how they're structured and, and the providers that are behind them, uh, how they're funded and how they're organized. So hoping to elevate the conversation, help people think a little bit more deeply about the, the services that they're supporting um, and, and how they're structured and up the services as well. Think about their organizational structures and how they're operating and um, to provide value 
to their users. Um, we also, with the intent with this, we didn't want to um, uh, have something out of the box. It was complete, it did everything. It's just, it just would have taken too much time. And honestly, I don't know that's a really great way to build things. So our focus really was on a prototype. Um, we selected 10 services that were broadly kind of representative um, and both in terms of the what they did and where they were located. So we tried to break out of the usual North American EU frame to reach out to include services outside in the global south. Um, really, is just an opportunity to validate the, the, the usefulness of this. Is this interesting to people? Is it providing value? Is it even possible to do this work? So, and there's a lot of learning that happened in the process of that. So um, what you're seeing is kind of us coming to the end of this prototyping process and looking at how we would scale for moving forward, make this more comprehensive, more usable, uh, more valuable to people like, like yourselves and like and institutions and funders and, and those who really have a vested interest in this information. Um, to again, to meet these, these various stakeholder needs. And that'll be part of this review process that we're doing as well. Um, and it's part of the questions that we asked for you in the interest survey that we'll be talking about uh, in a moment. So in doing this work, obviously we didn't just come out all on our own to do this. We stand on the shoulders of giants and want to take a minute just to acknowledge them. Um, and we, the mapping the scholarly communication landscape census and bibliographic scan was a very important uh, inspiration for this, understanding the, the, the landscape as it exists, what is out there um, that's been done. Uh, the, the SCOMCAT catalog was, a, was our starting point. We basically took the entries in the SCOMCAT catalog, um, looked at the, those particular, the nonprofits, the ubiquitous, uh, services and started doing investigations with those and they helped form kind of the nucleus of the work that we did. So we're very grateful to that team to put that work together. Um, also list of open access publishing tools from the Radical Open Access Collective um, and the Values and Principles Framework from Next Generation Library Project. Uh, we've been in touch with the Soaks Educopia and they've been a, a valuable help in helping us think about this kind of work. Um, obviously the principles of open scholarly infrastructure when we're talking about governance, when we're talking about operations, things like that, it was now, very important to kind of see, you know, which organizations have signed on, how are they expressing that, um, and using that as inspiration when we talk about governance in the context of the catalog of open infrastructure services. Uh, and of course, we couldn't have something like this without acknowledging uh, Jerome and Bianca's work on the 400 plus tools and innovations in scholarly communications. So a, a great resource cataloging a lot of uh, services that are out there, uh, a lot of tools um, that we, we reviewed through. And again, that was all information that went into this selection process, which I want to admit it was a very uh, subjective, <laughs> so the three of us at the time talking about this and really trying to find again, that, that representative sample as best we could. Um, and I, I say that because we've gotten some feedback. Um, well, why didn't you include X service? Why didn't you include Y service? Uh, some of you participants here were mentioned specifically, why didn't you include some of you all? Um, so I want to be very clear that this was a process to just validate the approach and not try and, and make any value judgment about one service over another or anything like that. It was purely just looking at the data and trying to make some subjective decisions about what made the most sense for what we were trying to do at the moment. But with that intent, if it worked out, to, to open the gates and include as, as many services as, as we could, as it fit the, the, um, the frame of what we were doing. And... So how we did this work, we're really quick just talk about um, where this data came from and how we did it. Again, that's been one of the, the major questions that's come up for us. Um, we collected data from provider and funder websites. So providers saying we got funding from X or, or listing their government's documents or some of these or other kinds of documentation. Funders as well, um, philanthropies, national funders, um, as you know, make a lot of information available about the, the fundees, those that receive funds. So we use that information. Um, annual reports uh, from providers, as well as in some cases, the funders, what they funded uh, was information that we used for this. Uh, for those services that are incorporated as a 501c3 nonprofit charities in the US, we access the Internal Revenue Service uh, Form 990 data. This is reporting on um, uh, revenues and costs, and there's listing of board members and, and other kinds of things that we, we accessed um, to gain insight into these organizations. Um, also surveys and interviews with service providers. So we, we did a round of um, interviews with service providers. And as part of that, we asked them to do a pre-interview survey where we asked them to rate uh, on different scales, some uh, funding sources, uh, their costs and staffing, how they were they're being staffed, uh, as well as a few other kinds of things just to help orient us to the work that they were doing and some of the concerns, challenges that they were facing in delivering their service. And that led us to the Catalog Open Infrastructure Services. 
So um, it's right now a, a web application pulling from our a database of, of this data. Um, you can see the list of the services on, on the page there. Um, and then um, we have different tabs that, that display the information. So we have an overview page, organization talks about the leadership, the founding of it, the leadership um, of it, and, and some other kind of information about the organization. Uh, the finances, so that's where we present the revenue and cost data, um, the assets, net assets, and, and things like that, um, as well as the delivery, talking about, about the tech stack, the number of users, the community um, efforts, and things like that in there. I do want to highlight one thing. Um, while most of the data is descriptive, so we're just basically compiling information from these sources into a standard frame, so it's a little more apples to apples comparison. Um, between the different services. We did um, pilot a, um, a, an evaluative framework. So we talk about transformative influence, and this comes from the work of Copum, um, looking at the different aspects of organizations in this space and how they express their values. So we did make some uh, evaluative judgments based on uh, openness, governance, uh, accessibility, uh, equity, and inclusion. Uh, we have a criteria for how those were evaluated, and that's documented in the our, our, our accompanying documentation for COIS um, and how we made those decisions. So, um, and we also have uh, another kind of evaluation on community engagement. Uh, some three elements about uh, how the services are fostering and supporting community um, in using their using their services. So, again, those are all documented. We're very open to feedback on that uh, matrix. We had conversations with the providers. We were sharing data back and forth, answering their questions, refining our approach in this. Um, and one of the values why this felt important was um, in, instead of just taking things as they are and just this is how they are, really talking aspirationally about what we would like um, these the open infrastructure, open science infrastructure, open, scholarly, open scholarship infrastructure to really reflect the values we wanted to reflect our aspiration for it. Um, and particularly when we talk about um, openness, inclusion, really seeing positive actions to, to foster that. Um, so that the, the efforts in that, in that direction aren't just um, notional, aren't just words, that they, they carry some, some real uh, commitment and stated and visual commitment, um, manifest commitment by the organization. So I'm happy to take questions on that as well um, when we talk about those things. But again, we are working with the, we work with those original providers uh, in this refinement. We're happy to take more comments and refine this further uh, as we work towards it. We're really kind of finding something that really speaks to the values and um, that we want to support as a community. Uh, we also want to acknowledge um, when we're doing this work, the Open Infrastructure Project leaders who gave us their time and thoughts uh, they did interviews with us, they answered our survey, they reviewed the data that we provided them. This is not their job. <laughs> they have lots of other things to be doing with their days. And so we really appreciate the time and energy they gave to us. Um, we also thank the institutional leaders, funders, experts, uh, in not only in the, the open science space and open scholarly communication, um, but also we've been working with people in the nonprofit management space, looking at uh, how you assess nonprofits and, and, and their work. So we've, we've benefited greatly from all of their input um, and look to continue that process of gaining input and, and making a, a better, uh, a, a better um, application, a better tool for, for, people, for stakeholders in this space. And we want to acknowledge our, our wonderful uh, designer, Allison McCartney, she did a great job, I think, with uh, the visual style and everything with it. I mean, it's, it's, it's really great. Hopefully it's, it looks good and is informative. That's what we, we try and do. So. Um, so that was an overview of, of COIS. I want to take a minute just to talk about our interest survey. So um, hopefully you, you saw in the communications about this that we are doing an interest survey. So this is helping us craft the future of COIS. The aim of this is to improve the value, usability, scalability, and utility of the application. So as I mentioned, this was a prototype. It was really us taking our best guess at this, well-informed guess, we like to think, and well-evidenced. But now it's the opportunity for feedback. We have something tangible out there um, and we're looking for feedback. What's the value of this? What's the scalability of this? Uh, for, particularly for those of you who have, who are providing services, um, who would like to be included in COIS, like how can we work with you to best get the data into the system? Um, what's the best way to design it? We're happy to, to talk through a little bit of that, like um, 
what is the most meaningful way to tell your story? That's what we really want to be able to do here is tell your story as a service provider about the service you provide in a way where that your story can be told alongside other stories in a meaningful way. Um, gather insights in how the information can be more usable, particularly from those um, like funders, like institutions who might be using it um, to, to really provide value, extra value, something that's not being met right now. Um, and like I said, co-developing meaningful measures. How do we best tell your story um, for those who are looking either to fund the service or to use the service or just want to be able to, to understand a little bit more about the, the landscape that's out there for these services. And as I mentioned with the transformative influence, help support transformative influence uh, in the space. So what we see, um, particularly when we're talking about things like openness, like governance, like uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, it's... I, Everyone wants that, that's all everyone's aspiration, but it's a question of how do we do it? And so hopefully this is one resource for talking um, in a more standardized way about how we do these kinds of things and, help, and, and leaven the conversation about how this work can be done. Um, so what we're asking for you in the survey, uh, so basic information about your service, uh, including a point of contact, someone we can reach out to. And um, there's a little bit about why you're interested in being included in COIS. What's the value that you see in this? Helps us refine the value proposition uh, for what we're doing. Gives us that strategy that the why behind all this that we're really interested in. Um, and also about the data. Is it easily available for you to provide to us? Why or why not? What could we do to help you? Um, it's really important to us that, you know, it not just be um, those who have, or who have the resources are easy to do this. But for those services that were the data may be a little bit more challenging to get, is there a way that we can help in some in some way, um, and how best to get to us in an ongoing manner? So we ideally we really don't want the data to be stale. We want to be able to update the data, um, and finding ways of doing that as we kind of build out our technology stack and, and make this kind of viable. Uh, we want to know kind of gather some of those requirements for how we can best do this. Um, I, as I've, I've mentioned in some of our blog posts, it was a very um, artisanal process getting the data together. <laughs> so a uh, very manual process that's not sustainable in the long term. So it's not only just about benefiting you, it's benefiting us to have some more streamlined, kind of easier ways of doing this. You know, and as I mentioned, how we can best help uh, in the process. And really, what would you like us to know about COIS? Uh, we've already had, as of yesterday, we had eight responses. There were some great responses helping, you know, um, you know, asking some really interesting questions about the service and about what we're trying to do and, and how they could integrate with this and things like that. So really it's open to some general feedback as well about this and any of your thoughts on this. Um, it will be open until 20 June, uh, but please don't wait. <laughs> if you're interested, please feel free to provide information. Uh, we try to make it very simple. You don't have to provide us any information right now. So no worries about like audited financial statements, nothing like that. Um, just letting us know kind of your best understanding of how easy this day would be and, and some of these answers to these questions uh, would be great. Um, and then we'll be putting the results out uh, August and in August once we had a chance to analyze them and look through them and talk to some other stakeholders in this process. So just to kind of map out the future of where we go from here. So we're, we release the technical conceptual documentation on COIS. Uh, that's, uh, you know, if you think about it as an alpha, if there's any questions where uh, the the system we use, HackMD, is uh, very possible to, it allows for comments in it. Uh, so we're looking forward to any feedback, if there's any concepts, things, languages that we need to refine, um, kind of share better, describe better, we're happy to do that. We're doing the interest survey. We're gonna be going back to the stakeholders to do some more interviews. Um, we're mapping, we're shaping those out right now to get a sense of how does this add value to the work that you do, uh, get feedback to help uh, put together a strategy plan and maintenance plan for COIS to really make this, how are we gonna make this uh, a, a better service? Um, and then set up our ongoing evaluation. So user feedback surveys and, and other kinds of ways that we can get ongoing feedback. Uh, the irony is not lost on me that in talking about other infrastructure services, we're kind of building our own infrastructure service. <laughs> so uh, in a sense, it's kind of bringing the, the pain and the joys that many of you are feeling home to, to us as well in a very, very visceral way. We have a little sense of what you go through on a regular basis. So. Um, excited to also make this a, a learning experience for us as well. And with that, I'm, I'm really interested in the, the questions that you all have. Hopefully that was a good orientation context setting for, for the work that we've done. And excited to dig into the questions. And welcome to those who, who just joined us. I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, I'll stop the share so we can all see each other and
and a lovely gallery. Oh, so Richard, um, to start, I see anonymous badger in the Google Doc, and please feel free to to add. Um, to start, the million dollar question from mm -hmm. Neil about how we define infrastructure services. Yes. Um, so for the purposes of this survey, of interest survey, I want to be very clear. We are making no restrictions. Anyone is welcome to, to add in, into the survey. So uh, with the understanding that submission of the survey is not, it's not a contract, you're not, you know, no blood is being given, nothing like that. So um, it is just a chance for us to see what's out there and what the interest is. Um, we just released um, our a preliminary investigation into the definitions of infrastructure, um, understanding what constitutes infrastructure from the literature, um, particularly we talk about information systems, things like that. So um, how we are defining infrastructure is still uh, something we're refining, looking kind of trying to survey the field and get a better sense of it. Um, we're very sensitive to the fact that um, while the, the, it's essentially right, infrastructure enables activities, right? And essential infrastructure enables essential activities, but it's not necessarily the same, just because you are a service doing a lot of things for lots of people, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are, uh, that that's the only necessary or critical piece. There are infrastructure services, um, I, I like to use the example of Mercudu, right? That is providing critical services to an underrepresented group is very critical for that group, even if that is a relatively small group. Um, so I, it's a very good question and uh, we are working on that definition. We had a, a public comment period. We got a lot of great comments on this definition and we're refining that. We'll be releasing that kind of more from a theoretical point of view that will inform that that definite, that, excuse me, that categorization as far as, as COIS is concerned. So stay tuned, stay in the conversation with us. We are happy for any feedback on it. But like I said, for the purposes of this survey, it's very open-ended. Um, I also want to acknowledge uh, in the, the literature on this, um, there's also talk of the social infrastructure. Uh, that is um, hard, much harder for us <laughs> to kind of talk about, but it is very important, right? There are groups, organizations, whether professional organizations um, or other kind of issue-based organizations that are providing a social infrastructure to this work. Our aspiration is to include them. Um, it's unlikely to be included in, say, the first iteration of COIS, but that is something we're also building to. And we're interested, particularly in this case of, you know, for this interest survey, if there are organizations where you say, hey, we're social infrastructure, give us that information and let us help us think about this um, as we, we understand this better. So I hope I, I answer that to the best of my ability. <laughs> Great. Um, I'm going to go just straight down the list here. So please keep adding those questions. Um, yes, and many services are heavily defined by their community. So I think that that's, uh, Neil, to your point there, you know, IOI for our purposes, we are looking at, um, you know, we, we came into this space to think about the technology components, but also as, we, as we're growing and learning, evolving that definition. Um, we do have a definition for IOI that we've been using that we're also looking to kind of further evaluate and assess as this work grows as well. And so I know that, I mean, I believe some of those resources are included in the document here. And maybe we can drop in a pointer to that um, work in progress in terms of the preliminary investigation too. Um, second question also from Neil is about the dependency and value chain uh, and noting that that's very important to highlight um, in thinking about services and how they depend on softwares and software and, and other platforms. Richard, I don't know if you want to speak a little bit more as to how we're thinking about that for the further iterations of course. Yeah, I, I think so. And I think that's the, you know, with the recent acquisition of Ring Gold, it's really made it very clear, right? That like um, these systems stand on other systems as well and understanding that dependency graph. We've been looking at different things. So um, there have been efforts in the open source software community to really map dependencies at the, you know, the basic level of what packages are being used and how they're maintained and things like that. Um, and so we draw inspiration from that, but for the purposes of COIS, given our tight time frame and, and everything, we, we, we kind of stopped at that very basic language level for the simple purpose of if I'm uh, someone who's looking at, you know, using a service, whatever, what language should my, my, my IT people, or my, my support staff know and things like that. So we're looking at it very, just very uh, uh, coarsely, if you will, you know, is this Java, is this Python or whatever, 
but really getting these dependencies feels really important. Again, when we talk about investment, um, knowing that uh, how these systems are built and how they're structured and also being aware of some of the vulnerabilities in that system. Um, when you're reliant on say a, a Java and that, you know, there's issues in that ecosystem potentially or, or other kind of complications and things, being able to assess that risk. Um, or if a key piece of software is owned by a for-profit corporation, but that's funding or that's supporting nonprofit, you know, managed services, that's a liability that we should be aware of and keep an eye on. So it doesn't become a, a mystery or like a surprise when something like that happens. It's in some way people know about it. Um, really interested, you know, in terms of graphing that, what people think about that and, and sharing that with us. And again, that's aspirational work you kind of get into um, to really know, okay, how is this, how does this work? How does it, you know, that we've built this out a little bit. How is this working and how can we make it better? Okay, moving on to the next question. How do we envision the, the focus of COIS? Do we want to focus just on governance and organization developing the infrastructures? Or would we like to also provide technical evaluation on features, comparison to other similar infrastructures, et cetera? So for example, do we see the catalog as something similar to consumer reports or something higher level focusing on governance? Um, the, the challenge we have, I, I agree, with, it, it should be more than governance and finances. Um, though I feel like that's um, kind of an underrepresented part. People are less aware of those kinds of things. So in, in the meantime, in the near term, it feels good to kind of get that out there and people more aware of it. Um, the, the challenge is, um, I don't think we want to be in the place of saying, you're a bad service. You're a good service. We're all in this together. We're all trying to be good services and do good things. You know, in like the consumer reports in the marketplace, uh, if you have a bad product, you should go away. That's how the for capital system ideally works, right? And so there's someone going to step in and fill that space. So while there should be some evaluative, it should be hopefully more in a constructive way to help move things forward to make things better. And rather a like than a name and shame or um, you're a one star service, you know, you should go for a five star service. I think it gets a little problematic when we're talking about building community um, and what that those dynamics that that creates. Especially when you have, you know, you have three um, open publishing platforms or open source open publishing platforms or so. Do we put our thumb on the scale for one? And how does that look to the community? Or do we just hopefully when someone is looking at those three, be able to surface the key things to think about so you can weigh the costs and benefits of going with say one that's supported by an academic institution versus a standalone nonprofit versus one that's kind of through a, a you know, has a for-profit backer or something like that. Um, helping surface those considerations so organizations can make an informed choice for themselves, I think would be a better place, but being very clear about what the trade-offs are. So those are informed decisions. And just to add to that, Mike, I'm glad that you flagged this, sorry for the airplane above, um, but I think as we further build out like kind of a critical mass of um, services that are represented in COIS and better understand sort of that data model, it would be great to further revisit that conversation about being able to look future to future. Because we know that, for example, and this is a question further down from Vanessa, um, in terms of, you know, target audience and goals for this, yes, in terms of identifying for um, for others who are looking to invest or adopt open infrastructure services. I'll give the example of an institutional budget owner or a library budget owner. Um, that comparison can be very valuable. Like I know we've got representatives from a couple different services that we've been in the conversation with in the repository space. And so that they can make an educated decision without having to duplicate the effort for their review so that they can compare maybe alongside whether DSpace, Fedora or in Venio or Zenodo are the right solutions for them too. Okay, moving on to Niels, uh, who serves this question in the Zoom chat, was wondering what feedback we received so far from stakeholders, funders, librarians, institution on the existing prototype. Uh, yeah, so the feedback has been, uh, it's, just to summarize, for me, it's kind of been like, this is cool. How can you can you get this other service in there? I like to see this other service. Um, there's a little bit about like, well, what does this mean? Um, but the feedback has been generally positive, and um, but we're we're trying, but the very kind of um, 
high level right now. And that's where we're trying to go for a more detailed, like some interviews. If you're familiar with user research, kind of like the focus group, the, you know, the usability testing with it, like let's get into it more. Um, there have been a few things, particularly around the transformative influence, we've heard feedback where um, the providers in particular have said, oh, we hadn't thought about that. We're looking at, you know, adding that to our site or addressing this or something like that. So it feels like there's a little bit of ripples in the, in the conversation of thinking about things a little bit differently. So, and that for me has felt very uh, rewarding so far, but um, I really um, want to get down to brass tacks. I kick the tires on this and see like, okay, where does it not meet your needs and where, where does it really need to be built out to be more, more usable for it? So just to summarize, generally positive, but um, definitely I think in terms of really getting into the exact value proposition, uh, still more work to be done for this. Great question, though, Niels. Um, also worth noting that, as you've seen, and I know we've got links to the documentation, we really wanted for this initial prototype to make sure that everything was like lock tight, verifiable. So there were a number of elements as we were building out this um, as a basis, and then also building out our research team when it comes to sort of the additional analysis that we envision IOI conducting um, to help make sense for various stakeholders this work. That's, I think, where thinking about, again, not only this next iteration, but also other um, you know, services or supports that IOI can provide from the research standpoint, I think also dovetail to moving that forward for specific funders and institutional leads as well. So Vanessa's question, what's the main target group and goal of the service? What action should it enable? Uh, so as I mentioned at the beginning, um, the really it's finding those information asymmetries. So it, it's really um, getting a more standardized view into the different services that are available and a way to um, understand what their feature, the, the aspects of them and have a little bit of evaluative uh, criteria without putting, like I said, too many thumbs on the scale, like you should do this, you should do that, but providing key information. Uh, the main uh, uh, target group is, um, well, I guess really two, the funders and the institutional budget owners, people who are really trying to value their services for use in their organizations to be able to have useful, reliable information to use. Um, so it should enable um, ideally more informed decision-making um, when you're looking at the, uh, not just the features of the service itself, but also the aspects of the provider that could really tell you, uh, is this provider well positioned to continue delivering the service into the, the near and long-term future? Like, what am I actually investing in? You know, it, it's, um, giving some of those trust signals to say like, this is a, a well-financed, well-governed, well-organized, um, well-operated, well-managed organization. Um, Cause we heard a lot about the, the challenges of, well, I want to support open source and, and open science, but I'm concerned that we're gonna get you know, invested into a platform that's not sustainable. It's not thought about sustainability or has some other problems or challenges. It's um, going to be challenging to, to know it's gonna be there the next five years or something like that. So we're hoping to kind of build something that's it speaks to, um, helps build more sustainability and more trust in these services going forward when you are funding or otherwise financially or you know, giving support to these services. So enabling those decisions, those, those kind of decisions to go into it. Uh, and if I can just kind of, because I think this also speaks to the, the next question that Vanessa had about um, the value as the unintended consequences of this. We thought a lot about both those things. <laughs> um, I was, we originally had talked about including, oh, what are the other competing services to this? And I was like, especially the for-profits, like, I don't want to be an advertisement for competitors in this. I want to, you know, really tell their story uh, in something of isolation. So it's really about them and not um, giving the opportunity to, uh, to detract from it. So we want to build up and not tear down, as I mentioned, these services and, these, and the community that we're building here. So really being mindful of that. So we thought a lot about intended consequences um, and we got a lot of feedback from the providers. They were concerned about how things were displayed and if that was really telling an accurate story. Um, so we talked about it. You know, What's the best way of telling a true and compelling story um, and keeping the consistency and it, it, it being a reliable measure and not just like a press release for, for some of this. So um, that's how we're thinking about it. How do we build, build up, make sure there's values alignment um, with this, but also um, with this goal to, to really support these services and, and the providers who are doing this, this really hard and difficult, important work. 
I'll just quickly add to that that um, again, this is part of where we're thinking through what the additional uh, builds on looks like and whether or not that's sort of in coys in terms of the analysis or if that is kind of situated alongside. Because for example, if you look at the way in which Crossref is financed versus say Center for Open Science, right? There's different dependencies on different funding streams. And we realize that there could be you know, assumptions that are made about one being right or the other. The context is really important. And so that's something that, again, we wanna kind of further discuss because when we did some of the initial um, focus groups, we were thinking about the initial design of course. So now that we have that out, we've got a few months under our belt or looking to build that out, um, going back to revisit, you know, some of those decisions as well. Okay. Um, Dominic from DOAJ, the process of mapping each infrastructure service to the eight properties drawn from our concept of transformative influence concerns me. How are those properties decided? Who decided what transformative influence is? Do they risk excluding services that aren't from North America or Europe? So thank you for the question, Dominic. Uh, we had a very long in conversation about this. We documented in our and the um, the uh, uh, our um, the COIS documentation that we have. I have a discussion. We have a discussion on transformative influence and how we came from it, where it came from. There are originally nine factors. We reduced it down to eight, um, and and the kind of the thoughts and justification behind it are there. Uh, as far as the um, exclusionary. Uh, parts of it, we've been very mindful of that. One of the things that was flagged was, um, and that's when that's why we kind of shift. When part of this conversation, right, was um, talking about the the structure of an independent nonprofit um, as a desirable goal, and it's not necessarily, and it's, it can be challenging different ju taxing jurisdictions and how those are arranged and everything like that. So, um, for example, um, uh, if We've had uh, Joy Owongo talking about the, the Kenya uh, nonprofit law and some of the structures that it creates. And in some cases, it's more beneficial to be a social benefit corporation. In the UK, a charity can't receive funding. So there's a whole, all kinds of things in there. So um, that's where being mindful of that is, you know, that there are differences in the legal taxing financial structures that are available depending on the jurisdiction that one is in. But still, I think aspirationally looking at this, how do you how are you organized in a way that's really community centered centered versus being more profit centered? And in this case, really focusing on those organizations that in whatever jurisdiction they're in, whatever way is possible, having a community focused and ideally kind of community empowered uh, approach to how they work um, to really make open viable. Um, I was talking with someone in this space um, in the open source software movement talking about the value of open is really only realize in community. So it needs to be embedded in the community to really realize it. I think that's very true for this space. Uh, we can't just have this kind of um, substitutionary, I think, model of, oh, we'll just have an, a nonprofit version of a for-profit thing. It's like, there's a different cultural change and structure to this um, because of the, the, you know, being nonprofit, it's, there's a different kind of way of, of thinking about it on some levels in some ways. Um, so that being said, we're very mindful of it, particularly how this applies outside of the North American EU context working with researchers and people involved in this, in those, in those communities to help give us feedback. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we, we were very intentional to include Cielo in this as one of those uh, kind of organizations that works out in the global South to give us their feedback on, okay, what does this look like for you? What are some of the challenges you're facing, you're having to deal with? Um, and we try and surface those things uh, in COIS and, and as we go forward, better adapt to those other situations. Um, so it's the eight aren't written in stone. Um, and we're definitely open to feedback on it. But again, for, for expressing the values, particularly when we talk about governance, governance can look like a lot of different things. We fully acknowledge that. Um, you know, in the COPEM work that we, we grounded this in, it also talks about the multiplicity of models and governance. And we're gonna be doing more work on governance. Um, but it's really important that organizations in this space be thinking intentionally about governance and really trying to develop governance structures that, that express these values of inclusiveness, openness, transparency, accountability, um, to ensure that this that um, that this space this uh, the infrastructure we're trying to enable are well supported well expressive of our values. Thank you for that, Dominic. I'll also add some links um, once we get into the next question as well. Um, not only to the documentation piece where we've further detailed some of the thinking around that, um, and again we would further welcome feedback as well. 
but also one of our initial posts as we were beginning this work around thinking beyond some of the open characteristics and you know how much do these models move us beyond um, our traditional ways of working, right? And thinking about that. And I think that there's further revisiting and exploration of that that we um, are aiming to do in the future. And that is, is helpful to continue to revisit as well. Next question from Joanna, what's the vision for this service? Is it intended to be comprehensive? What are the plans of keeping information up to date in a way that's not too onerous for individual infrastructures? It's a great question. Yes, very great question. Uh, happy for your thoughts on this. So yes, it is, well, the comprehensiveness is a challenge, right? We, we can't have, it would be great to have every single service and be like, you know, the um, mail order catalog of infrastructure, open infrastructure services. Um, and it, really nice to be there. I think that's where working out the the submission and the data process and the evaluation process to be as um, easy and lightweight as possible is, is really to our benefit for that. We would like to be the trusted resource that people go to like Consumer Reports or Morningstar or whatever else for this. Um, but it's, we can only build it. We're asking for you all to come here. <laughs> if we don't have the value proposition, if it's not worth your time to be invested in, then it's hard for us to be comprehensive. So we're trying to build a service that encourages and is valuable so that there is uh, a people you want to be part of this um, and we can be more comprehensive and we will do everything we can to do that because we want to be a, a valuable resource. As far as keeping information up to date, um, we're thinking about, so some of the data can be automated, automated collection. Um, and we're kind of hoping that this spurs some uh, standardization of this data um, in a way that kind of makes that automation easier. Um, however that might look, um, but then also looking at a self-service kind of option so that there's ways that um, you all could submit your data yourself so that it's a little, um, that also helps us. So would you do a new, um, you know, if an annual report or a budget or something like that you're publishing out on your website, um, there's an easy way for that could be uploaded to our systems and we can kind of take it. So it's, we're, we're getting the latest and greatest uh, as easily as possible um, from, from y'all knowing that people have different you know fiscal years and you know, budget planning cycles and things like that so that's where in this um survey we're asking for your thoughts on this so we can plan for that strategic and, and maintenance plan how we might work that in but it is our aspiration to have something that's very easy to use very streamlined um, and can be kept up to date very easily great and a question from Vanessa, what about the governance of the service? Who decides on who's included and who are the gatekeepers? Yeah. Um, so that's where we're doing this work on the understanding of what is infrastructure. And we're trying to have a very clear criteria and how we set this up um, and make the decision-making as, as transparent as possible for it. Uh, in terms of, with the self-service, there is a, a question there about how, how that's managed, both in terms of just a practic, practical way, making sure we get good data in, there's a quality control piece to it. Um, and then as far as what services are included, having some, I agree, there should be some clear governance on that, if particularly if there's any question. We are subject to um, the input of a committee oversight council. That is a, a means and a mechanism by which concerns can be surfaced and, and within our organization. Um, and I, I, has, I, I, I doubt the committee oversight council would, um, not want to be involved in that conversation or have some kind of input into it. So um, while we, as the people working on this service and providing it, um, do have the ultimate say, we want to be transparent and work with the community as much as we can, providing input not only to the, directly to the team, but through the Community Oversight Council and our governance structures as well, because it all comes underneath that, uh, to make sure the community feels good about this. And again, this feels very fundamental to the value proposition. If it feels like a, just a a Richard's likes or a Kate's or Kay's likes or whatever, it's probably not going to be as useful as if it really is a, a more collaborative expression of the community's interest and concerns and, and values. Yeah, and I would just build on that too by saying that, you know, as we move this forward, this is where the, um, you know, not to put governance in the form of automation, but this is where having more standardized ways in which we can um, have individuals supply information for um, for review, because we also recognize our own limitations and our own bias, right? I know we've reached out to a number of you to help move this beyond the, what we refer to as sort of the usual suspects of the infrastructure conversation. Um, or as someone once told me, like, here are the 15 services you need to supply, you know, funding to, and it's not that hard. It's like, well, we know that that's not 
an adequate representation, nor does that really solve all the challenges. So um, we're working on further building out our Community Oversight Council to have their insight and involvement in this, um, as well as have a, an active conversation with the steering committee that once we wrap this initial review in August, thinking of, you know, is that sufficient in terms of the governance structure, um, in addition to, you know, checkpoints like this with um, you all and invitations where we invite the public in or through public comment periods where do we need to think about additional support on that side too. And, and just to add, I just mentioned that like it once, you know, again, the value proposition, the strategy and maintenance plan, like this is really a viable service. We launch it and get it out there. Having regular feedback mechanisms, you know, surveys, focus groups, kind of involve, community involvement in this to the extent possible. Um, as, as much as we can to get this information. Um, I will add, and Kay can stop me if I should not mention, but like we are talking about, you know, other data providers, particularly Koki uh, in this space too, about ways to, to enrich this data and also, you know, find some ways of kind of um, helping leverage kind of their resources and assets as well into this, which again, speaks to some of the automation piece, but then also speaks to, Having this as a more shared resource as well that we're we're you know integrating into other existing infrastructures systems in the in the space. But we will commit to making that as publicly available as as we as fast as we can and as publicly available as, as we can as we make those decisions because we're still thinking this out in the open as well. Okay. Does anybody have additional questions that they'd like to ask? You've got 12 minutes until the top of the hour. Or we can listen to the birds chirping in Kate's back, Kate's yeah. backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I got Niels to smile at that. <laughs> okay. Well, we will hold the space if folks would like to stay on and have additional questions. Um, we'll be here to through the top of the hour. Um, please feel free if you want to reach out to us um, directly to have a further conversation on this or have a question that comes to you that you want to flag in this document. And um, we do have another version of this. So for most of our European colleagues, I would say, please, please be asleep the next session that we have for this for our Australian, New Zealand and West Coast colleagues. Um, and uh, Australasian colleagues as well. Um, but again, we remain available if you have any additional questions about this too. Um, Emmy, do you want to go through any additional resources or follow up for that? I think we're otherwise pretty good. Yeah, just want to um, thank you all for uh, joining us today. And uh, this slide here highlighting the sort of additional uh, blog posts and resources that. Um, we have published before, and um, I think I believe the links are in the shared notes doc as well, but we'll make sure to get them emailed out to y'all um, when we have the recap and recordings up so that you can keep coming back to them and please help us spread the word as well. Um, we are, yeah, just thank you once again for being here. Um, if you have any questions about, you know, when you're filling out the survey um, or, or any other questions, um, please feel free to email us at research at investinopeninfrastructure.org or catalog at <laughs> investinopeninfrastructure.org um, and, and we'll get to you uh, as soon as possible. Um, just while we've got all of you here, um, I'd like to just quickly do a sort of one minute uh, anonymous um, session poll to understand how whether you found this uh, session useful at all um, and that will really help us um, understand you know how we can run these calls in the future and how we can solicit that community feedback in in the way that we uh, build our uh, uh, you know services and and resources in the future so um, it's five questions um, please give us your input and um, thank you for that um, just to also highlight that while you're doing this um, that we you may not be able to see the poll if you have an older version of Zoom and uh, we apologize for, for that. Unfortunately, that's a, a technical issue that we have no control over. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, um, we're, ho we're hoping to share the recording and notes um, from this from this section session and the next one that it will be later in the day um, on our blog. And for those of you who are watching the recording right now, um, yeah, um, please feel free to 
um, reach out to us if you have any questions and we'll be happy to take them um, offline in, in emails, of course. Um, just looking at the responses coming in. Thank you so much. Um, Thanks, everybody. If you do have to hop off, please feel free to. Otherwise, as Caitlin's saying, we're hanging around until the top of the hour if you want to ask more questions. I'm just going to close out the poll now. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for participating. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining.